So in this video, I'm going to explain what wobble pairing slash the wobble position slash some people call it the wobble hypothesis. Either way, they're all referring to the same thing and I'm going to explain what that is in this video. So before we begin, we have to remember that the wobble hypothesis is referring to translation. And so remember that translation is when you take an mRNA piece, as you can see right here, and you use tRNAs to create a protein or a polypeptide. And so the wobble pairing slash the wobble position has to do with translation. So remember that the anticodon is going to be on the tRNA, and that's going to be complementary to the codon on the mRNA. However, pretty much the wobble hypothesis, the wobble pairing, wobble position, is saying that some tRNA anticodons can pair with more than one codon. And in this situation, it's more likely that the third position can tolerate mispairing more than the first or second position. And so as you can see in this example over here, we have the guanine in the wobble position, in the third position, and it could pair with either a cytosine or a uracil. That's why it has the C slash U. And if you haven't taken biochemistry yet, this might be a little bit too much in depth, but remember that purines are adenine and guanine and pyrimidines are cytosine, uracil, and thymine. And so a purine pairs with a pyrimidine to make the Watson and Crick base pairing in DNA. So generally adenine pairs with thymine and guanine pairs with cytosine, but adenine can also pair with uracil in RNA. So back to this example, you can see that the guanine is, gonna, is able to pair with the cytosine or uracil and the guanine is double ring and the cytosine and uracil is single ring. And so that pretty much is simply the wobble position. It's pretty much just referring to the third position and it states that the third base in an mRNA codon can undergo non-Watson-Crick base pairing with the first base of a tRNA anticodon. So these two right here. And so I won't go over it now, but when you take biochem, you might have to remember that if an adenine is in the third position, it can either pair with uracil or inosine, which is another base that you may learn about in biochem. And the last thing I just want to briefly go over is the importance of the wobble hypothesis. So currently, the belief is that the wobble hypothesis explains why multiple codons can code for a single amino acid. And if you're curious, you could go back to a recent video that was made on the redundancy of the genetic code, where we talked about many codons coding for the same amino acid. The wobble hypothesis also explains why there are more codons that exist than there are specific tRNA molecules. And lastly, it explains why a lot of the variability between many of the codons that encode the same amino acid is with the third base. So if you go Google a codon chart, you'll see that the codons that encode for the same amino acid generally will differ at the third base. And so that pretty much sums it up for this video. Ultimately, what I hope you got out of this is that the wobble pairing refers to the third base in an mRNA codon that can undergo non-Watson-Crick base pairing with the first base of a tRNA anticodon. Or in more simpler terms, some tRNA anticodons can pair with more than one codon as shown right here. And you also have to remember that it's in the third position. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them behind. I hope you liked the video and found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.